Have you ever really gotten into a video game or a movie? Well, if you're anything like me, you have. As a kid, I really wanted to be a Jedi after watching Star Wars Episode 4, A New Hope. Back when it was still known as Star Wars, none of this Phantom Menace bullcrap. Well, today we're reviewing a game that I really got into, Beyond Good and Evil. Beyond Good and Evil is a stealth-based RPG developed by Ubisoft and released on the PlayStation 2, GameCube, and Xbox in 2003. Beyond Good and Evil takes place on the planet Hillies. You play as the protagonist Jade, or Yade. Bravo, Yade. Jade works as a caretaker at an island lighthouse with her uncle Paige, a Seuss Sapien, which means pig biped creature. What? Your uncle isn't an anapromorphic creature? Jade works a side job with Paige as a photographer, taking pictures of hillies, wildlife, as well as alien creatures. Recently, the p quiet, peaceful lives of the inhabitants of hillies have been shook up because of the occasional Dom's attack. Buildings have been destroyed and people have gone missing. Beyond Good and Evil is definitely a stealth-based game. However, if you get caught, you can oftentimes fight your way through, or run and hide and get another shot at sneaking. Jade fights with a weapon called a Jo, which is a wooden staff sometimes used in Japanese martial arts. It's like a very small quarter staff or bow staff. Yes, I know a thing or two about stick weapons. And yes, I'm going to deny you that joke by saying that's what she said. <laughs> Jade uses this weapon in two main techniques, attacking and power attacking. You can chain together sequences of strikes based on the direction you're facing and the quickness of these strikes. By holding down the attack button, you charge up and unleash a powered up version of your attack. Additionally, Jade dodges. Although there's not much to say about dodging, you can somewhat control what direction you're dodging by moving in the direction while you press the dodge button, but that's really about it. While most of the game you can get through with combat, there are parts of the game you need to sneak past the enemy guards. Sometimes you'll be forced to stealth, other times you can just walk up and kick them in the shins. Ow! If stealth is your cup of tea, Beyond Good and Evil is happy to oblige you. Generally, the trick is to observe the patterns and sneak through to get to the next room. If you happen to screw up, there are usually designated spots you can hide and wait for the guards to reset. The realistic part of my brain always gets annoyed with stuff like this. Oh, what's that? Someone ran into the base and beat the crap out of three guards and is now completely gone because I can't see her anymore. Well, back to walking in circles, I guess. There's a number of different collectibles in Beyond Good and Evil. There are two types of currencies in the game. Pearls which are used to upgrade vehicles by purchasing them from the good old boys at the Mama Go Garage. Which is technically the black market, since the pearls are the black market commodity. It said so right there in the description. So the Mama Go Garage is the black market. The other currency is units, which you can use to purchase various smaller usable items from vending machines scattered all over Hillies. I swear though, who would hide these machines all over the planet? Look at that! Look at that! Who's gonna buy that from here? Huh? Okay. The, f the flying dragon monsters? No! No, they're not going to. There's a side job slash project slash collectible slash activity where Jade attempts to find and take pictures of all the various animals on Hillies. 
At first, this simply starts out as a way to earn pearls and units, but later becomes an addicting challenge to try to find and take pictures of all the animals. It's kind of what Pokemon would be if we weren't allowed to shove little animals into tiny balls. Lastly, there are a number of M discs which you can collect. Although there's no real reward for doing so, it's just another crazy thing for overachievers like myself to work towards. Actually, that's not entirely true. You see, if you manage to get through the whole game and collect all the things, you are given a grand reward. And the grand reward is just a mini game that you get. I mean, it's cool to say that you've unlocked it, but in the long run, eh, you can take it or leave it. Speaking of minigames, there are a number of them in this game. While playing through the story, you are obligated to play the shell game once. And if you don't know what the shell game is, I would like to know where you've spent most of your life, because everyone knows the shell game. The ball goes under the shell, you watch the shell like a hawk, the game master tries to get you to lose the shell with the ball under it by shuffling them all up. At the end, if you choose the right shell, you win! Yay. You can play it to grind out money, but why the heck would you do that? Go take pictures of animals. That's what you should be doing. No good. There is another game you can play to get a pearl. I have lovingly named it the 8 Puck Game. And boy do I hate it. It's basically air hockey, but with more difficult controls than a drunk guy with an RC remote control car. You point the puck through the narrow gap in the middle of the table and then hit the puck. Hopefully you had time to analyze incoming pucks, if your puck was moving, which direction it was moving, and then divided by the square root of frustrating keyboard and mouse controls. This is one of those games where it's a little bit easier to play with a controller rather than a keyboard and mouse. Oh, what the? You win! Early in the beginning of the game, you get a vehicle called a hovercraft. Other than the obvious use for transportation, the hovercraft is able to double as a battle boat and as a racing boat. There are a number of upgrades which you can purchase for the hovercraft by using pearls. The combat is very straightforward. You can shoot, you can also use various items to repair the hovercraft, or give the hovercraft a temporary boost of speed. This especially comes in handy if you suck at racing sections. There's a number of details I'm skipping over, mostly because I don't want to explain too much about the game, and there are a number of upgrades you will unlock as you progress through the game. There are also some very obvious items that I feel no real need to talk about. For example, I think that everyone should know already that there is a health meter, and that there are items that you can heal yourself with, which always reminded me of Little Debbie products, which for those of you that don't know, generally is a very guilty pleasure food that I really shouldn't eat, but they're so darn delicious. Good day, a final note I'd like to add is about okay. the port to PC, or console, differences. Since I own Beyond Good and Evil both on the PlayStation 2 as well as Steam, I think it's important to mention that Jade controls quite well on the PC, but Beyond Good and Evil feels most natural with a controller. The good news is that the PC port isn't very bad. The worst possible thing to say is that the 8 puck minigame is tough -er than normal, but I was actually able to 100% the game. That means getting all the M discs, animal pictures, and collecting all the pearls. There is a common graphical problem people have playing this game on Steam. Many people encounter a problem with the game flickering. To solve this problem, you need to disable the HW Vertex processing, the Multi Vertex stream, and lastly disable the W buffer. For other problems, you might need to toggle on or off other options, but turning off these three worked well for my computer. In conclusion, I absolutely love this game. I feel it's worth the playthrough because of the outstanding quality story and the gameplay. Not to mention the unique story, memorable characters, suspenseful moments, and much more. Sadly, this game isn't very well known. 
It's oftentimes heralded as one of the most underappreciated games Ubisoft produced. But it doesn't need to be like that anymore. Greetings and salutations, friends. Thank you for watching my review. If you like what you saw, feel free to subscribe to my YouTube channel, and maybe even give me a thumbs up. For those of you who already know me, what reviews are looking forward to me reviewing next? And for those of you that don't know me, hi! What games would you like to see me review in the not too distant future? And that should be a wrap. Bravo, Yid.